Hey there guys and welcome to another Ask Exterminator episode. Uh, this is a series where you guys ask me questions and I answer them. Uh, if you would like me to answer a question uh, that you have, leave your question in the uh, comments of this video and I will answer them next week. Uh, in this one I am going over questions for last week. And uh, I did really quickly want to apologize for this being late and not having many videos. I took a couple days off for the holidays. Unfortunately, uh, the views and stuff on the channel have massively suffered. This is why I can't take days off ever, basically. Um, so, but it was nice. It was nice to just not really have to worry about doing anything. Um, anyway, let's get into it here. I hope you all had a great holiday and uh, and are, are doing well, staying safe. So, first question um, here comes from the Kaboom Shroom. Um, I like your name, by the way. It says, what supercomputer do you use to run those mega bases? Are there mods that improve import uh, that improve performance? Um, so my computer is good. It's certainly not like the absolute top of the line. Um, it's it's a little over a year old. So I mean it's good. Um, I uh, I'm running. What do I have? I have a i7 9700K. Um, I don't think it. No, I didn't overclock it yet. Uh, and then I have. 16 gigs of RAM, 3200 megahertz at uh, 14 cast latency. That's important. Um, the, the, the CPU and the RAM speed as well as the cast latency being low, um, 14 is fairly pretty low. Um, what's important for Factorio mostly. Um, I also have a 1080 Ti. That's not that important for Factorio. I mean, if you want to run the HD graphics, you do need a decent graphics card, but mine is quite overkill for Factorio. Um, and then an SSD, which does help, I think, a little bit. Um, and that's basically it. Um, so yeah, I mean, good computer, not the absolute best ever. Um, but the, the CPU and the RAM are the really important things for Factorio. Uh, Starlord Bob says, almost 700 hours played, never launched a rocket. Do you have any tips how to not get stuck in the loop of downloading and trying different mods? Also, I'm a big fan of following me a long time, um, especially love the stream shenanigans. Hey, well, thanks, um, Starlord. Love it. Um, I love your question, and I really appreciate um, that you enjoy the content and tune into the streams. So, your question is hard, though. Uh, I don't really have the best answer, to be honest with you. Uh, the reason being that I don't know if I have, like, really any tips how to stop that if... First off, I want to I want to preface this by saying that if you've never launched a rocket after 700 hours, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, that's in in my opinion, that's a good thing about Factorio is you don't even ever have to beat the game. Hell, I don't care if you played thousands of hours and and stopped playing altogether, like just moved on to another game and just never launched a rocket in your time of playing. Um, you can have so much fun and do so much with the game without ever launching rockets. Um, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, if you do kind of have a habit of like just downloading and trying different mods, I mean, if that's what you find fun, then honestly, I'd say stick with it. If it's like a really bad habit you're stuck in and like don't actually enjoy it, then, then that's kind of difficult. Um, one thing, maybe you could just take a break and maybe if you come back, like fret like a bit fresh then maybe you would be okay just playing vanilla and stuff without having to try all the different mods um i mean yeah my, my you know this may not be the answer you're looking for but but my answer is that if you enjoy just trying out different mods and stuff i don't think there should i don't think you should change that um if if you uh if it's like really annoying that you're doing that to yourself <laughs> um then uh then yeah maybe you know, maybe maybe try to play with some other people too who who are playing vanilla, and, and you know they won't let you download mods. So maybe play with them, and maybe playing with some friends and stuff will kind of distract you from needing mods. Um, or maybe just take a break, like I said, and come back fresh, and maybe the vanilla game will be appealing to you. Hopefully that um, hopefully that helps answer your question. Um, Ultra says thanks for answering my question last week regarding barrels. Um, I have yet another question regarding some controversial oil changes. Uh, so ba before basic oil processing produced all three oil products, yes, this, it used to produce all three, um, petroleum, light oil, and heavy oil, you had very strong opinions when they changed the recipe to only give petroleum. What do you think about it now in retrospect when that feature has been active for a while? Um, so the question Ultra had last time about the barrels is they nerfed barrels quite a long time ago. 
and uh, I was very upset with it, and I'm, I'm still upset with it. I still very much disagree with that change. I think barrels are pretty bad. Um, this is a little bit different. I have grown to adjust to the oil uh, change, and I'm not really that upset with it. Um, I think I think it kind of, like, now that I've actually played with it a fair bit, it kind of makes sense. You know, like... When you make blue science, you need to do oil because you need petroleum for the red circuit, for plastic to go on the red circuits, and then you need also petroleum to make sulfur for the blue science itself. Um, so it makes sense that really you would only need petroleum um, in, in stuff like that. I think that... I think there's a couple things that are an issue. Um, and there certainly were issues with the way it was before, so like that wasn't perfect by any means. Um, one issue I see with it still is that um, it doesn't really give you my, it doesn't really like for new players especially. Um, it doesn't really prepare you for the fact that you're going to have to change your entire oil setup when you switch over. Um, for players like me and experienced players, like I already know what side water goes in. I already know where crude oil and light oil come out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I just build my setup kind of pre-prepared for that. Um, but newer players who, who haven't played before, like, they're not gonna know, that they may not even know about advanced oil at all, unless they look way ahead in the tech tree, and even if they do, they're not really gonna understand, like, how it works with the refineries until they get it, so probably, like, the majority of people, new players, are going to plug in oil and just run a straight pipe across the entire back of the refineries where the oil goes in, and then do the same thing for the output of the petroleum, and then when they go to switch, they're like, and they're probably going to place the refineries like right next to each other, like no space in between them, I'd imagine, unless they put power poles in there. So then when they go to change to advanced oil, they literally have to tear up their entire oil build um, if they put their refineries next to each other. If they space them out, they still have to tear up their entire thing of pipes and redo it and like flush everything. Um, I think it just like doesn't really prepare you very well for what's going to come. And I think it can be really like kind of startling to someone who, who hasn't, you know, who's new to the game and, and tries to switch over and realize that it just like breaks their entire setup. Um, so that's the one thing I don't like about it. Um, otherwise, I'm not really as upset about it as I was. The other thing, which isn't directly with this um, in the refining section, um, but another change they did make with oil is they changed it, I believe, um, if I'm remembering correctly, they changed it so that solid, um, sorry, that rocket fuel takes light oil and solid fuel before it just took solid fuel. I don't understand. I don't know why they make it take light oil as well. Like, it, it to me, and, and again, this is just my opinion. I could certainly be wrong. Um, to me, it makes absolutely no sense. Like, Probably, it's still the most effective to make um, solid fuel from light oil. Like, that isn't changed. It's the most efficient way in terms of ingredient usage. Um, and once people figure that out, if people, like, players figure that out, like, th themselves in their, in their own game, then you're going to probably be using light oil to make the solid fuel, right? So why do you then do you need light oil again in the same recipe? Like... I mean, it's going to be there anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. It just didn't really make sense to me. It's like, I thought it was fine just taking solid fuel. I, I didn't really see any point whatsoever in making it take light oil. So mostly that one just confused me. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm not super upset. It, it works. It makes setting up your first oil build a lot easier, that's for sure. Um, but then it does make it much more um, kind of startling <laughs> and stuff when you go to switch over. Um... Origami Phoenix, and Origami Phoenix has asked several, um, like, food-related questions, which I really appreciate. I, I love these questions. Um, say, what do you usually cook? Are there any simple vegetarian recipes you'd recommend? Um, yeah, so in last episode, they asked um, some questions um, about, I think, my re favorite restaurants and stuff, um, and that, and I, I think I said last episode, the episode before, that I'm a vegetarian, so kind of tying into that. Um, what I usually cook, um, it kind of depends, honestly, to go into a little bit more I don't want to go too much, um, is I do have some, like, digestive stomach problems, um, so I, I don't know if it's IBS, the, the, I went to multiple doctors, and, and they never really officially diagnosed it as IBS, but they couldn't find anything wrong, so they were just like, oh, 
you probably have IBS. Um, but, uh, so to just put a name to it, it's kind of like IBS. So, um, I have to be careful with what I eat and especially like, um, if I have like a busy day the next day or like now I'm working a part-time job, like actually going somewhere and like working, um, somewhere uh, in addition to this work. Um, and, uh, and so if I like work the next day, at the part-time job, I, I have to eat like pretty mild. Otherwise I'm, I'm just going to like suffer through the entire day, like horribly. Um, so I mentioned that because that kind of then depends what I eat and what I cook. Um, so if I'm like working the next day, like out of the house, um, I will make a lot of salads. I absolutely love a big salad. And, and I know a lot of, I know some people are like, oh yeah, well duh, you're a vegetarian or like, you know, that's like so boring or gross. You know, some people will be, some people will understand. But the thing is like, I don't, I don't think a lot of people understand like how good you can make a salad. When I say salad, I don't just mean like lettuce, tomato, cucumber, done. And like, I mean, to me, that's like really boring. Like when I make a salad, I do lettuce, I do kale, I do cucumber, I do tomato, I do onion, I do bell pepper, I do pepperoncinis, I put cut up some cheese and put it in there, I boil an egg and cut up a boiled egg and put it on top, I crush some tortilla chips and put it on top, um, and that's like... So I, I make like a super loaded salad and I absolutely love it. I probably eat that like three or four times a week, to be honest. It's just delicious. Um, and then I eat a lot of soup for sure. I love soup, um, like chicken noodle soup without real chicken. It's like substitute vegetarian chicken. Um, and then like a lot of like kind of like kale mushroom type soups. Um, and then other stuff I'll cook. So like if I don't work the next day, um, I absolutely love nachos. Like I'll make loaded nachos with my girlfriend, you know, put on rice and obviously cheese and then some sort of protein, either beans or like fake, like meat grounds or something. Um, corn, you know, homemade guacamole, salsa, sour cream, stuff like that. Um, so I'll cook that. Uh, I eat a lot of eggs, obviously. So like my breakfast, I usually like cook an egg and make a bagel, cut up some fruit. Um, usually I don't eat lunch. I I've kind of gone down to just eating breakfast and dinner. Um, some other stuff I cook, I will make some pasta once in a while. The gluten-free pasta is not that great. Um, I am kind of gluten intolerant as well. Yeah, I know <laughs> I got, I got like the worst of everything. Um, so I have to eat gluten-free pasta and that's kind of gross. Like it doesn't, it just has a weird texture. It doesn't really cook right most of the time. So usually I don't eat a lot of pasta, even though I love it. Um, Make some like fried rice, like some Thai fried rice for sure is definitely, or some pad Thai um, are some things I cook. So simple vegetarian recipes, definitely I would recommend, I mean, a salad, it's easy. And if you make like a loaded salad, it can be filling, it can be delicious. It doesn't have to just be like super bland and stuff. Um, I mean, if you can eat like cheese and stuff, I mean, nachos, you can totally make vegetarian and like, I mean, you can make them really hearty. And then, uh, like fried rice and pad thai are really simple, especially if you buy like pre-cut veggies, um, man, it, it goes, it's really simple. So those are some, those are some things I'd recommend, um, that are just like really easy to make vegetarian, uh, and, and stuff like that. So hopefully that answers your question. I really, I really, um, appreciate and enjoy these type of questions. Um, Robert M says, Megabase has always seemed to have these really fancy tiling of concrete. What's the optimal way of doing that place? My hand seems like a nightmare. And even with blueprints, it still seems really difficult and tedious. Um, oh, so like the, the concrete designs, I feel like there's some like mod or software or pro like outside program that does those. If people design them by hand, they probably do use blueprints. Like they'll design like a design, like part of a design and then have like four different blueprints to like make up the whole thing or they'll have like just make like the design all in one and put a blueprint and then they just stamp it down and have robots do it that's definitely the most optimal way is blueprints and robots um definitely don't want to be doing it by hand even if you're not well if you're just doing plain concrete like if you're just not doing any designs um it may actually be faster to place it by hand because you can make the brush super huge and then you just like run, especially if you have a lot of exoskeletons. That may actually be faster than robots, I'm not sure. Um, but definitely if you're using like blueprints with in like making like fancy designs and drawings in them, 
absolutely blueprinting and robots is your best bet. Um, so Jensen Lassie, I think Jensen says, back when I got into Factorial, I watched a lot of videos on the game, including your 60k science per minute Clustoria project. Nice. So I ended up making my own Clustoria setup and is working towards the same goal. Any tips? Did you have all science labs on the same server and how did you distribute the science packs? I've tried direct insertion from trains, but having that many inserters working from train wagons doesn't seem very effective. And at the other extreme, having one big chunk of science labs and real poor is boring. Um, well, I hate to tell you, uh, we went the boring route and we definitely did have all of our labs in one map. And I'm pretty sure we did just beacon labs and use robots. <laughs> so I uh, can't really help you there because uh, that's what we did. Um, unloading from trains, is a cool idea, but like you said, it doesn't work super great. You could belt it. I mean, belts are super optimized now. Like you could totally belt it into the labs. It you'd have to do some fancy like belt weaving for sure. Um, and use blue belt. I think bots are still your best bet. Um, and then the science packs, I mean, yeah. So then we had like a separate server for every science pack production, I think. Or maybe we put all the actual science pack production in one server, but then we have the ingredients made on all other servers, like spread out across different servers. Um, that's, I'm trying to remember exactly how we did it. We had a ton. We had like 20 different servers going for ours. Um, so, oh man, if you're doing it on your own, that's really hard. Because we, we, we had like 10, 15 people working on it or more. I'd say even more, maybe close to 20. Um so that is a lot of work. I would definitely say pace yourself. Um, definitely split things up logically. So, you know, putting, uh, <laughs> so putting, you know, like things that use similar ingredients together definitely makes sense. Um, putting your smelting, you probably have to, if you're actually going for 60k science a minute, you'll definitely have to have multiple smelting worlds. I'd imagine we had more than one for sure. Um, I'm trying to think back any other tips I can give you. I believe that's mostly it. If you have further questions that I didn't answer, definitely ask um, in this video's comments and I'll answer them next week or just reply to your comment. Um, yeah, hopefully that helped and good luck. Speaking of luck, um, Luck Van, I can't pronounce your last name, I'm sorry, asks, would you play Space Exploration again? I play that mod, but it's so hard. I like to see you play it. The mod has made so much progress in this year. It's not even recon recognizable anymore if you haven't played it like years ago um no probably not um it's changed a lot i know but i think it's still super complicated and i stopped playing because it just seemed over like i just gave up i'm gonna be honest <laughs> i'll admit it i gave up um I, I got into space i made all except i think the last or last two science packs and i was just like this is ridiculous um i'm not i'm not gonna do this anymore um and i just stopped and if it's anything as complicated as it used to be, which from what I've heard it is, or even more so, then no, not gonna pay, play space exploration again. I, I think it's a really cool mod. I think it's excellently done. I think it's an awesome idea. I love the idea, um, but it's just kind of too much at this point, like Bob's mods for me, where it's just like too complicated. I, I just I just don't enjoy that level of like tedium to, to, to get to the end game. It's, uh, it kind of annoys me. Um, let me see. Okay, this is a really weird, interesting question from Jason. They say, if BuzzFeed made a quiz along the lines of, which Factorio item are you? What do you think your result would be and why? Um, damn, I don't know. My first answer is a pistol, just because I get so many pistols from my streams because people kill me i uh, like that the, the tw twitch viewers can do stuff to kill me in game which means when i respawn i get a new pistol and i just get a ton of pistols that's probably not a really good answer um to be honest i don't know i don't know like i, I thought about it a little bit before reading it but i'm not sure i can give a so good answer for this what factory item are you i don't know that i can relate to an item <laughs> Um, hmm. Trying, I may need to think on this for a little bit. And then you have, on a less silly note, what keeps you going in life or Factorio? Well, in Factorio, 
Uh, what keeps me going is the fact that I need to earn a living because this is my job basically. Um, so I kind of have to do it. Um, and then that in and of itself inspires me to come up with new and creative ideas. Um, and then in life, well, also to, to add on Factorio, also streaming, like when I stream, I love it. The, the viewers, you guys are awesome. Uh, everyone who tunes into my streams, it's a ton of fun. It's just, uh, it's really great. It, it's definitely a different experience than making videos. And I'm not saying I don't enjoy videos, I making videos, I do, but the streams are just like so much fun, they're awesome. Definitely recommend stopping by if you haven't. Um, and then in life, um, I mean, I just keep going because I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I have goals, you know, like I, I'd like to own a house soon. Um, I, I have like, I'm really into Lego right now, so I'm like constantly trying to get like new Lego sets, uh, you know, I, I want to you know, I, I want to, um, I don't know, I just enjoy it. I just enjoy life. I just enjoy doing what I'm doing. I enjoy the little things, I think. Um, like, you know, I get so much pleasure out of just, like, at night, after I eat and stuff, just going and sitting on the couch and just, like, watching some YouTube videos or, like, watching a TV series or a movie, like, Stuff like that, I get immense enjoyment out of. And that's part of just my personality, you know. I'm an introvert. I like to just kind of, I'm a homebody. But, like, you know, it to me, I don't have, like, these grandiose plans. You know, I just I just kind of enjoy one day at a time. And, and just kind of enjoy what's happening at the moment. Um, and then, yeah, man, back to your first question. Factorio item, are you? I don't. That's just really hard. Um, I may, I may have to. Come, I may have to maybe ask me again next week. <laughs> I'm not sure I can answer that right now. That's a very tough question because I don't. I don't know like really how to relate each thing. To be honest, um, I, I want to say a beacon. Maybe uh, just because I think. I think I, I really, like, affect the people around me. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of what I've been told, is that, like, I just kind of have a strong um, effect and, like, sway over people around me. Um, and, I mean, that's kind of what beacons do. Like, you know, they they kind of just, you know, they affect other, other things around them. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, that's probably my answer, actually. Uh, Backseat Gamer says, where does the name come from? Were you a pest control specialist in the past? <laughs> no, I was not. This, uh, this is, uh, people have asked me this before. Um, so, uh, a long time, when I was a kid, um, when I was really young, for, like, the first M-rated game I, I got was Halo. Uh, my dad and I convinced my mom to let me get it. Uh, me and my dad used to play a lot, and, and, uh, my, my friend and I played a ton my best friend, and um, I got really good at it. Like, I'm usually pretty humble, but I got really, really good at the game. Like, I, you know, I would go into, I would play online, enter lobbies, and I would basically be first or second place in every single game I went into. And, you know, I was really good playing with my friend and stuff like that. Um, and he was just like, man, he, he, I forget exactly what he said, but it was just like, man, you were so good. You were just like literally exterminating anyone you run into um and at the time i'd come up with some stupid like horrible name that i was i'm really bad at names i came up with some like off stupid horrible name <laughs> i don't even remember what it was um and he was like hey why don't you change your name to exterminator because you just exterminate every single person you run into in the game and it stuck i liked it it worked for most games i played and i've just stuck with it since and that's that's how it came came about honestly so it wasn't really even a name I came up with but that I fit into I think pretty well at the time um so yeah that's kind of how that came along um Derpamuse says if gaming and streaming were no option what would you want to do as a job uh I think someone asked this a few episodes ago I would want to probably man I don't know I don't know. I, I would think I would want to do something like, I don't know, working with animals. I really love animals. Um, like, I try to support, like, animal rescue foundations and stuff. Probably something in that field. 
Um, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know, some sort of, some sort of, like, city, um, planner sounds really cool. Something, like, I'm really interested in. Um, you know, I don't know. Something like that, maybe? I haven't really thought about it that much. Uh, yeah, if gaming and streaming were no option. Probably one of those two things, for sure. I, I think I can maybe give a more elaborate answer in, in like, next episode. Um, I just don't think about it that much, to be honest with you. Uh, Bob Bob says, do you think minefields are still worth it? I think they're decent. Uh, it, before you have robots, I don't think they're worth it at all, because you gotta go out there and replace them every time yourself. Once you get robots in a robo network, they can be really good if the robots replace them. Um, they do quite a lot of damage. Uh, it can get, you know, obviously expensive replacing them, especially if you're being attacked a lot. Um, I think they are underutilized. I don't really use them that much. I usually just forget, but I do think they are still pretty viable. Um, Omar says, what's the best way for transporting water for mega bases? Is it good to keep all water related stuff near a lake in an outpost to transport oil and water inside the base? I would definitely try to do water related things by water. You can transport them via train. If you need a lot of it though, that can get really hairy. That can get really, really tedious, really hard um, if you're transporting a huge amount of water like for nuclear or something by train. People have done it. It's not that it can't be done, but it is. it requires a lot of trains, a lot of infrastructure. So I would definitely try to build your water consuming things near water unless it's something very minimal like oil doesn't take that much water um and stuff like that but yeah definitely try to build it by water would be my recommendation um and a name i cannot pronounce whatsoever it's in a different language says do you have any experience with programming um have you considered playing any zaktronics games on this channel their games are about engineering and that's why factory players often enjoy them as well for programs i recommend exapunks for non-programmers opus magnum i have absolutely zero experience programming um, this is why I usually bring someone else with me um, to uh, record my Friday Facts videos, and because it's fun, like Bomb Bug, I really enjoy, you know, he's a friend of mine, I, I enjoyed recording the episodes with him, but someone with, like, programming experience, because I have none, um, like, I, I literally am an idiot when it comes to that, so, no, I have none, uh, I'm not playing any Zactronic games, I do know of them, um, and they just, I don't know, I'm not, I don't think I necessarily have, like, an engineering mind, uh, so, they, I don't know, they're not usually my type of games. Uh, let's see, Shadowhinge asks for Factor. oh, they just ask, Factorio 2 or DLC packs? Um, which would you prefer the devs do to further develop the franchise? Um, DLC for sure. I don't, the thing is, Factorio's not really story-driven, like, it's just not. There's not that fleshed out of a story, to be honest. Um, and usually in my experience or my opinion, having a sequel is some sort of continuation on a story or just like massively improved features and graphics and stuff like that. Um, and none of that really applies to Factorio. There's not much of a story to begin with. Um, I suppose maybe a second one could create a story that, you know, ties in. Um, but like, if they still go with the top down, like viewpoint, like, I don't think they can really make the graphics that much better than they are. Um, it's optimized, like, to the upteenth degree, so, like, they, you know, it's not like they need to do a new game for better optimization. Um, I just think DLCs would be far more realistic to introduce just, like, smaller things, like some sort of better in-game, which you don't really need a whole new game for, um, or just, like, I don't know, some sort of new power source, or some sort of new enemy, or some sort of new transport. I mean, trucks, planes, boats, except, like, there's so much you could do with a DLC that I think doesn't really warrant a whole new game. Um, so I definitely would prefer a DLC. Also, because DLCs are a lot faster to do than a whole new game, typically. Um, and I would just want new Factorio content faster rather than waiting like five more years for another game. So uh, that would be my answer. Um, hey, and Shadowhand is in Denver as well. Yeah, as I as mine. So I moved here 20 years ago from Eng New England. Great city, lived near spring. Nice, dude. Um, that's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I love I love living in Denver. Um, it's uh, 
it's really nice. It's it's a little too crowded right now. Like there's just so many people here. I don't really like how crowded it is, but I love I love the state. I love the area. It's it's awesome to hear you live here too. Um, that's you, you, there's quite a few people who actually live um, in Denver, Colorado. Um, let me see. Um, the Kaboom Shroom says, are there any texture pack mods? Um, yeah, I think there's some. Um, Fred G answered and said they should be under the non-game changing mod section. Uh, texture packs, I think, I mean, like, alien biomes, like, would be the closest I can think of, where it just adds, like, a bunch of biomes and, like, snow and stuff. Um, I don't know if there's... I think there may be a couple for changing buildings. I cannot come up with them off the top of my head, though, at all. Um, I wouldn't, I don't really even know that I've looked at them extensively. Um, also, I think someone asked, I don't know if, we've, if it was Boom Shroom, um, someone asked about, like, are there any mods that are, oh yeah, they also asked if there's mods that improve performance. Um, not really, not now, there used to be, but, like, the devs have improved things so much performance-wise. I can't think of many mods that really improve performance that much, to be honest with you. Uh... Halaska asks, what do you think of mods that change the way beacons work so it alters the way you build setups? Playing space exploration, I got super fond that the beacons interfere with each other and you build around it instead of plopping a billion of them down. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think having a more, uh, I don't know if challenging is the word I would look for, maybe just like a more interesting way of using beacons and different interactions with them is certainly a good thing in my opinion. I've not actually played with any mods that change beacons, um, but but yeah, I do think mods that make them more interesting as long as it's not like really stupidly complicated, um, I, I, I would be in favor of that for sure. Um, let me see, a lot of this is not questions. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all the questions, guys. Oh, wait, no. Sorry, Fred G. <laughs> um, says, do you think that it is accept acceptable to limit rights for the greater good? Should the government be allowed to set how many children you can have? Would that infringe on people's rights? Is it acceptable to limit people's rights for any reason? Um, I don't know if I can really answer this. Like, uh, I don't know if I'm really allowed to answer this. <laughs> this is getting, like, a really political. Like, I would like to answer it. Um, but it's getting, I feel like really political and like kind of verging on something that I'm going to get like demonetized for and stuff, um, and make a lot of people angry, which is not really what I want to do. Um, I definitely do have opinions on this. Um, I think, yeah, I can't really, I don't think I can really answer this, man. I, I it's not that I don't want to, I'd really love to. I think it's a great question. Um, to give you a very short, generalized answer, in some cases, to some degree, I think it's okay to limit rights for the greater good, um, simply because I think people are way too entitled. Like, I'm not saying, <laughs> yeah, again, see, now we're going down a path. It's not like, I'm not saying people shouldn't have rights, but like, people are so entitled. So many people literally don't care about the greater good. Like, they literally, all they care about themselves, like. So many people, they don't care. They all, all they care about is is themselves. Um, I mean, it applies to me sometimes. It applies to almost everyone. Like it's just the way people are, humans are, that mo that you know some people more than others for sure. That you know they just care about themselves. They don't care how it affects anybody else. They don't care what's going on with anybody else. Um, so like, if there were no rules imposed, then like we. We probably wouldn't have survived this long because <laughs> people just don't care about other people like in general in a very general sense so like i mean yeah to a degree i can't really go i don't think i can really go into much more detail about that um unfortunately i would like to it's a good question that's just a little verging on like what i would consider not really appropriate for me to be answering here um so yeah 
Thanks for all the questions, guys. I really appreciate it. Where there were a ton of them this week. So it's a long episode, but it was great. If you have questions uh, for next week, leave them in the comments of this episode. And uh, until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your support. Videos should be coming back after now that the holidays are over and my other work, sh um, my part-time job should be calming down here in the next week or two. And uh, yeah, I believe that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much. Until next time, look forward to seeing you all and do take care.